hello and welcome to our channel now this is going to be a funny video because i have a bad background here maybe a bit of ambient noise but i thought that we could qu quickly record one uh, so uh, i come across youngsters and youngsters usually insist on suggesting some good pubmed index journal for their publication now this is uh, a quite fascinating question to ask because uh, uh, many times when i ask back why do you need a pubmed index journal they're not able to rationalize why now uh, perhaps they have been recommended to go for a pubmed index journal by their faculty uh, or their uh, senior friends or peers who have already uh, gotten into the uh, publication business uh, right, that means that they have been writing avidly and trying to get published. Uh, PubMed is uh, sort of a validation of the quality of the journal. So usually pub, uh, journals which are indexed on PubMed are considered to be of good quality. You don't manage to get indexed on PubMed if you are a bad journal or if you are a, a predatory journal. That means there is uh, you do not have a good practice of uh, peer review. Uh, so if a journal is on PubMed, it just shows that it is uh, of fair quality. Does not always mean that uh, if you are on PubMed, that means you are a great journal. Still, most of it is true. The other parameter on which people assess the quality of journal is when they talk about its impact factor. Uh, and there are other metrics also to measure a journal's performance. Now, I, I would not always say that uh, PubMed is sacrosanct. Still, uh, if it is on PubMed, it's a good journal. But uh, what exactly is PubMed? PubMed is uh, an abstracting and indexing uh, authority. That means you find uh, uh, a listing of different journals and similar resources uh, uh, which are indexed with PubMed, uh, submitting their abstracts to PubMed. So you can see those abstracts. Many times even abstracts are not available. But uh, that it's if the, if the journal is indexed, then you could see uh, the articles published in that journal listed down on PubMed. You can search for them. Uh, but PubMed does not archive the full length article. So PubMed links you out to the publisher's website or to PMC, PubMed Central. Uh, PubMed Central has a solid overlap with PubMed, but not everything that's on PubMed Central is available on PubMed. So these are like two circles overlapping on one another which, with much of PubMed Central's uh, uh, documents being available or linked out through PubMed. Uh, PubMed Central archives those articles. So if the articles are on PubMed Central, uh, like full length articles are on PubMed Central, they can be accessed. Most, much of them, most of them can be accessed uh, through links provided on PubMed. Now, uh, but what is Medline? Medline is a subset of PubMed. So all of Medline is on PubMed, but uh, journals uh, or resources which have been recommended by uh, NIH, that is National Institutes of uh, Health. So it's almost the counterpart of ICMR in US. Uh, so uh, NIH, if NIH recommends the listing of the journal on PubMed, uh, on, on Medline, then it gets into Medline. Now Medline is a subset of PubMed. That means all articles on Medline, all listings on Medline are on PubMed. But the reverse is not true. Uh, now, uh, Medline helps in organizing the articles based on an ontology. That means uh, those ontological arrangements are called medical subheadings. So Medline uh, uses medical subheadings to organize the articles. You can look for MeSH. So medical subheadings is the expansion for MeSH. So you can go into, uh, you can type MeSH terms into, punch MeSH terms into PubMed and see how the tree of arrangement is. Uh, done on PubMed. So Medline engages a team of researchers across all seniorities who would be uh, tagging the different articles uh, listed on uh, different articles on the journals listed on Medline using mesh terms. So once these uh, articles have been tagged, the uh, they are arranged uh, within Medline using those ontological arrangements of mesh terms. So if you are looking, suppose you are searching on PubMed using just the mesh terms, and not get into the uh, databases of Medline. Uh, if you are that means uh, all all the articles that are listed on PubMed and not in Medline will be missed out. So that's why we recommend that you use free uh, word search as well as mesh term search to make the search uh, the the literature search more sensitive. Uh, 
Medline also has an overlap with uh, PubMed Central. So, but but here we need to see that you need to understand that Medline is entirely a subset of PubMed. PubMed Central has an overlap with uh, PubMed, and also much of it uh, overlaps with Medline. Uh, we can still go and search on PubMed Central, but uh, suppose we want to look for any articles, uh, any journals, we want to verify if a journal has been listed on PubMed or not, we can uh, go and search on PubMed or we can also go and search in the NLM catalog. But we uh, here w w one uh, trivia is that PubMed is not the biggest database uh, for indexing uh, or uh, abstracting. Scopus is uh, uh, the bigger one. That's why much of our UGC recommend recommends to go for at least Scopus uh, indexed articles. PubMed, getting into PubMed could be even tough. Most of most of the articles which are on PubMed are also on Scopus. It's only that Scopus is not free for access. PubMed has allows free access. Uh, I guess this was some kind of a conceptual clarity that you could get. PubMed has excellent resources on the internet. You can go and explore. Much of my talk has been uh, uh, resourced from different PubMed uh, uh, videos. So thank you so much. Enjoy your PubMed experience. Thanks.